Hello everyone! Fulcrum points are an essential part of the physics character. Based on them, the physics of the character is calculated in the frames and the intervals. Therefore, if the fulcrum points have not been determined correctly, you may end up with the character jumping in the places it was not meant to, and vice versa. They also play an important part in other instruments such as animation on baking, for example, which takes into account the intervals with and without fulcrum points. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what the fulcrum points are, how you can use them and set them up properly. As an example, I will use one of our sample characters and make a very simple animation with only four keyframes. Now let's turn on auto physics. As you can see, the character stands still in all the frames and the points of their feet are outlined green, which means that in these intervals, they are considered to be fulcrum. You can also check the color of the stripe above the timeline. The green color means that there's enough fulcrum points on the given interval for the character to be completely stabilized. The more points there are, the greener the line becomes. So if the character stands on all fours, the line turns dark green. So in our animation, the physics character does not suggest any changes which is fair because the character does nothing and stands firmly on the ground. Now I'm gonna go to frame 10 and raise one of the character's feet. As you can see, the green outline around the points has disappeared. It happens when the points get far away enough from any surface they can interact with. And the stripe above the timeline has now turned yellow on all the intervals where the left foot is no longer considered as fulcrum. Notice how on frame 0, it is also not considered as fulcrum since it already loses its contact on the next interpolation interval. And this goes all the way until frame 20, where the foot gets back in the contact with the ground plane. Now on frame 20, I will select the points of the other foot and start moving them around. Once the points get far away enough from their position in the previous keyframe, they will also stop being recognized as fulcrum. And now we ended up having an interval on the timeline where none of the points are considered to be fulcrum. And as you can see from frame 10 to frame 20, the stripe above the timeline has now turned orange. Now auto physics treats such intervals as jumps and builds a ballistic trajectory for the character's center of mass. The bigger the interval without the fulcrum points is, the higher the jump will be. This is what commonly happens with in-place animations specifically. So sometimes adjusting the fulcrum points manually will be necessary depending on the animation you're working on. To do that, select the points of the feet and open up the fulcrum tab in the object properties. There you will find these two values. So let's take a look at the collision radius first. The collision radius is the max distance from the surface within which the point is considered as fulcrum. By default, it is set to 5 cm. Now, if I increase this value on this keyframe, I will be able to raise the foot higher above the ground and it will still be considered as fulcrum. These parameters are of course keyable, which means you can set different values for different intervals. Now, it could be useful if your character, say, travels along uneven terrain, where you can set higher values for the intervals where the feet are placed slightly higher above the ground. However, I would not recommend doing that for greater changes in the height, say for staircases, for example. In such cases, it is best to create the collision objects which your character can interact with. They work similar to the collision with the ground plane, and I'll put the link to a dedicated video in the description below. Now the second parameter is max speed, and it is the distance the point can travel within a frame and still be considered as fulcrum. You can change the value there depending on your animation. Setting it to a higher value will be especially handy for those in-place animations. And again, this parameter is keyable. Now to make changes to multiple keyframes at once, select the frames on the timeline and make sure apply on selected interval is on. Now the value you're going to set will be applied to all the selected keyframes. And lastly, there are three buttons available which can define the fulcrum state on the current frame. 
Turning the first button on means that the selected point can be considered as fulcrum if it meets the criteria of the given values below. Setting it to Enforce will mean that the points will be considered as fulcrum regardless whether they meet the criteria or not. And setting it to Not Fulcrum is self-explanatory. The important thing to mention, however, is that the effect of these buttons will carry on onto the next interpolation interval. And I believe this is all you need to know about the fulcrum points and the ways to set them up. Hope this was useful and see you next time.